World Cup show debut, The Guardian's Ian McCord in the house, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Ian. Welcome to the show. Let's start with Germany-Ghana. I think that was the most exciting game of the World Cup so far. What about you? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe not the first half, but the second <laughs> half was brilliant. Very exciting. But I'm very, I'm kind of pro-Germany. My money's with them for the tournament. So. You think they're, they're your favourites for the tournament? I think so, yeah. I mean, prior to last night, the defence had looked quite solid and the attack was looking great. So you kind of get put the two of them together and you think, great, OK, I've got the package here. But mm, maybe last night I was feeling a little bit nervous towards the end. Yeah, close as uh, equaling the record, of course, was the big story of, of that game. The stats don't lie, but at the same time, do you see him as one of the all-time great strikers in world football? I think because he's like this organism with just one goal in life, and that's just to put the ball in the back of the net. He doesn't get as rated highly as other players because uh, he doesn't do anything outside the box, basically. But, I mean, 15 goals at the World Cup, it's more than Pele. It's more than Gerd Muller. It's the same as Ronaldo. So he's good in that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. What about Ghana? They look terrific. They've got to beat Portugal, though, to have any chance of qualifying. You think they can? I think they will. They They've will. got this spine going through the team of... Jonathan, okay, Montari won't be, will be missing for the next game. And they've got uh, Asimo Gian up front. And they just look, they look solid and really, really strong. Okay. Uh, Argentina-Iran uh, was a fascinating game. Uh, Iran, I think, were unlucky in so far as that was a definite penalty, wasn't it? No. You don't think it was? No, I don't think so. Because he got, touched the ball. I could, he touched the ball, yeah. Mm. He got... You, you see, see him given. <laughs> see him given. Um, yeah, you see it first time and you think, oh, wow, that's got to be a penalty. But then when you see the replay, I think you see that uh, Zabaleta wrapped his foot around and just about got away. It was close. Yeah. Very close. And considering the penalties that have been given at this World Cup, you would think, yeah, maybe we could see it. But no. It was almost time. a remarkable result. Uh, Messi stepping up when it mattered. Still coming under a lot of criticism, though, irrespective of that. Yeah, he shouldn't. Should he, really? Because he's the only one that's actually offering any attacking verve for Argentina. I mean, Aguero and Higuain didn't really look very good yesterday. They were very poor. And... You know, when Messi can do that, you know, there's no reason to criticise him. He's brilliant. What will that result do for Carlos Quiroz, do you think? Because tactically, he got that spot on, despite, or maybe because of attempting only 130 passes, mm. which is the lowest in, World Cup, in the World Cup since 1966. But that result will presumably up his stock quite considerably, won't it? Yeah, you would think so. I think a lot of people will look and see what he can do with a limited side like Iran and, you know, put that on a bigger scale. OK, looking ahead to tonight, uh, America-Portugal is perhaps the, the standout game for mm -hmm. me. Do you think America are now favourites to qualify for the last 16? Yeah, I don't know favourites. Portugal still have Ronaldo, who's still 10 times at least better than every player that America have. So they've, they've still got him, they've still got a really good chance, even if his tendonitis is, is, is kicking in. Um, as good as they were against Ghana, I still think that... Portugal might just do this one. They're so efficient though, aren't they, the Americans under, under Klinsmann? Unsurprisingly, right. I guess. Yeah, yeah. And they, they did really well against Ghana, like, because Ghana controlled most of the game and they just took their, they took their two chances when they had to. But I still think Portugal will have, just have too much. OK, Ian, let's look ahead at tonight's games. And this is where you get the chance to play your three cards. Breakout star, unsung hero and head-to-head. -head. Anything takes your fancy in any of these three games, you can call it out. Uh, start in chronological order. Belgium-Russia is the first game up tonight. And Belgium, many hipsters figured they'd have a deep run in the tournament, but they didn't look particularly clinical in their opening game, did they? No, not at all. Despite having this golden generation of players who were very skillful on the ball, they had to lump it up to the big man up front uh, to break the deadlock. Um, so while they are dark horses, I kind of feel they don't have the ex necessary ex tournament experience to, to win it. You mentioned Fellaini. He's uh, your unsung hero. Incidentally, he said if they do win it, He's going to shave all his hair off. He's going to cut really? his hair. Yeah, well, cut. He didn't sp specify shave. He said cut, which is something that we hope that Rodrigo Palacio would do. But <laughs> <laughs> fat chance of that. So why is Fellaini your unsung hero? Um, well, I just think that he gives Belgium a slightly different option, where they have all these players who can play these intricate, nice triangular passes. Yeah, um, Fellaini kind of offers a bit of strength and a bit of athleticism up front, which should be great against uh, Russia, who are quite strong, I think. Next up, South Korea, Algeria. It'll be such a shame if Algeria go out, which if they lose, they, they will be eliminated, mainly because they were so spirited in the first game against Belgium. Yeah, they were great. And they really held, you know, very good but inexperienced Belgium side 
back for long periods of the game. They seemed tired towards the end, and that obviously didn't help. You mentioned Belgium's inexperience. Algeria, the most inexperienced of all the squads in the World Cup. Yeah, they think they've just 16 caps uh, on average per player in the squad, which is obviously the worst of the whole World Cup. The whole bunch. Your breakout star comes from this game. Yeah, it's Yassine Brahimi, who plays his football for Granada in uh, Spain, and who scored the winning goal against Barcelona uh, late on in the season, which is where most people might know him from. Uh, but he won't start. But he'll add. Uh, he could add a, like a nice attacking verb off the bench if they, if they so they can hold it for nil all and then maybe catch a late goal. Now the late game tonight. I think probably the pick of the bunch: USA Portugal. Yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo versus the entire USA team yeah. is your head-to-head. -head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's on him, isn't it? Because Portugal don't really have any other. I mean, well, nobody has players of his stance, but he really is their big star. And like, there's been other players like Nani who've just underperformed. And their defence is going to look a bit weak with Pepe out and Contrao out. Um, so they really, they've just got to go for it. Otherwise, because if America win, Portugal are out of the tournament. Why has Ronaldo struggled in, in World Cup finals historically, do you think? Well, I think, like we said, they have, they don't have, he doesn't have a great amount of you know, really good players setting him up or you know, geared towards him in the team. I also think that a lot of teams will sit quite deep in the World Cup because you're better off with a point rather than losing in, in group stages. Also, he just, he really hasn't performed for them. I mean, this thing gets, what, two goals in 11 games, is it, and 55 shots, so he just really hasn't been up to it. Good stuff. Now, before we go, let's take a quick look at our predictions table. Barry Glenn Denning, your colleague, he's caught back up with another colleague of yours, Ian Pryor, the head of sports, all square at the top, very tense. An exciting Raf Honigstein, a further colleague, was bottom of the table, still is, even though he got the result of Germany Ghana bang on. Uh, the boys at Bigodi's Bar, which is a bar in Brazil, uh, they're all Argentina fans, <laughs> right. naturally enough. They're storming uh, up the table into third place at the moment. I'm currently tied with our Brazilian school teacher, Mary, who, uh, <laughs> by her own admission, knows nothing about football, so I'm doing well. Uh, here are the predictions I hope uh, will catch me up with a leading pack. I've gone for Belgium 2, Russia 0. Belgium will be a pretty plain sailing there. South Korea won, Algeria won. I think uh, points shared there. And then Portugal have gone for the win over USA. That was a tough one. I agonised over that. But I think that the Ronaldo factor will be the difference. What about you? What do you think the score will be in that one? I think Portugal 2-0. Portugal 2-0. Well, yeah. there you go. That's just about it for today's show. Give it up for Ian, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. Making a fine debut. Uh, let us know your predictions in the comments below for USA Portugal. Do you agree with us? Portugal going to win or will Team USA get something on the board? And don't forget to subscribe for more great World Cup content. Coming up tomorrow, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank making his hatchet yeah. appearance. Oh yeah. oh yeah. So for that and much, much more content, check it out right here. See you tomorrow. Ian, I need to get you to sign the desk, my friend. Okay. Um, I kind of this zone here, I think. It's kind of looking a bit... Who else, who else have you had in? Jimmy well, Floyd, Jimmy Hasselbank. Floyd, Matt Holland, Julian okay. Aron, um, Geiske Mendieta. This is oh, some wow. fine company here. Mate. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's good. Natural. Natural. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you, my friend.